Today I'm gonna move fast because I'm gonna give you 20 pointers on how you can control 20 properties starting at 20 by the time you're 40. Let's get into it. By the way, if you're watching this and you're starting at 20 and you don't have much, the system is set up to make it easy for you. In fact, this is much easier if you don't yet already have children, but you've got a good job and you're ready to invest money into real estate even if you don't have a lot. So watch this, it's really gonna help you and if I didn't have two children and I was able to do this all the time, I'd be milking this. So let me share it with you and show you how you can dominate this. Oh, and there's nothing that says you can't do it with children. It's just a little bit harder. Step one, you need a great realtor and a great realtor that invests in real estate themselves, knows how to find a good deal, knows how to walk you through investments and help you buy in the wedge of the market. Step two, you need to buy something. And I know what you're thinking. You're Kevin, wait a minute, you're confusing me. You make so many videos about the problem with the market and the crash and this and that. But then you always say, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate. Wait, what do I do, what do I do? Buy a good deal now. Just discount the fact that prices might fall seven to 10% based on what I'm seeing in this Southern California area, Ventura County, Santa Barbara County. Build that price in, negotiate hard up front, get a good deal and buy in the wedge. You'll still be able to insulate yourself because we don't want to play the market timing game. We want to get you in. Step three, I want you to buy something tiny. Like uh, seriously, buy something tiny. Don't buy something you're gonna live in forever. That's a stupid thing to do. Nobody ever ends up living in something forever. They end up moving after a few years or seven years anyways, the average. Buy something really small. And you're gonna see the reason for this, but I'm talking about like a studio, a small studio. Just get into something. Watch the reason for this. It'll blow you away and do not be afraid to consult a realtor. It doesn't cost you anything as a buyer to use a realtor in the United States. The seller pays. Milk that information, it doesn't cost you anything. Oh, and forget about all that crap that says, oh, I don't wanna buy something that only has one door. You're gonna be buying 20 of these things. It's just gonna be spread out a little bit. You can always consolidate in the future. You now people are like, oh, I don't wanna have 20 things spread out, that's harder to manage. Well then fine, when you have 20, then sell everything and consolidate. But we gotta get you there first. Then you have choices. Now the caveat to consolidating is buy units if you can, but try to buy under five units. There's a specialty in buying one to four residential real estate and that you could take advantage of the financing we're about to talk about, the financing we've talked about in other videos like this one, and the financing that makes selling and reselling your property very, very easy. And that's very important for making sure your market value stays high. So if you can get into units like these, Take advantage of it. Under five units is the key. Autopilot, on! It's already on. Number five, buying the wedge. If you don't know what the wedge is, you need to watch this video because I'm going to reference it a little bit later in this video. It's very important for you to understand it because I'm gonna blow your minds with something nobody likes to admit. Next, you need to fix everything up rental grade. I'm serious. Don't spend so much money on crap you don't need. That was a horrible feeling. Don't spend money on crap you don't need. Don't spend money on fancy furniture. You're just gonna have to move it again after a year and it's gonna get scratched up. And don't start leaving comments about your vintage furniture. That it somehow goes up in value and it was a good investment. That's a great rationalization. Don't wanna hear it. But if you happen to say that in the comments, I'm not gonna delete it either. But if you're gonna do that, at least smash the like button right now. Go on, I gotta get down from here, you got time. Folks, seriously, I can't stress it enough. Don't spend money on stuff you don't need. You don't need crown molding in a rental. You don't need wainscoting in a rental. You don't need Italian marble tile and you don't need Brazilian granite. You need the basic quartz, the basic Ikea cabinets, which are really awesome actually. The basic vanity from the hardware store, not the $2,000 one on house.com, although I do buy vanities on house.com. I just happen to spend $1,000, not $2,000, on a complete set with faucet and countertop. Love them, good deal. Number seven, you need to internalize. Start small and move up, 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 up. Now I'm bending over to give you some blockage from the wind and I don't think it's working. Cue a U-Haul. All right, so you go from a 400 square foot studio to an 800 square foot studio, that's good. Now you can qualify for property number two. Then you go to a one bedroom, then you go to a larger one bedroom, then you go to a two bedroom, then you go to a two bedroom, two bath, instead of a two bedroom, one bath. And see, you can use actually going up in the parameters over time, but doing it so often, not only is a treat for you, you get something new to live in every year or two or whenever you can qualify, you do these changes. I'm still getting, I'm getting breezed through this, are you kidding me? 
There we go. But the last thing you want to do is buy a studio first and then move into a four bedroom, three bath with a pool. Because what are you going to move to next? An eight bedroom? Sure, okay, you can argue a five bedroom, but remember, you got to do this 20 times. Number eight, and this is very important too, you need to buy, this is gonna sound crazy, and this is the part I alluded to earlier where I said you really wanna listen to this part because nobody tells you about it. I think maybe people just don't wanna admit it. You need to buy with little down. Here's why. If you're going to buy a place that needs cosmetic renovations, you're going to buy in the wedge of the market and you're gonna follow that wedge video. You're gonna buy a wedge case scenario. Then it's okay to put 5% down because by the time you do the improvements with the other cash you have, let's say maybe you have 5% for a down payment, 5% for fix up, hopefully you have pushed your total equity into the deal because you bought in the wedge to 15 or 20%. Now it's as if you bought a remodeled house for 15 or 20% down, but you really only did it with 5% down. Folks, if you're gonna buy in the wedge every single year, it's gonna be very, very hard to save up 15 to 20% every single purchase. So you need to take advantage of those three to 5% down deals, save the money for the fix up, and that's how you build the equity in the property so you can get rid of mortgage insurance in the future as your equity continues to grow. And remember, you're buying for the long haul here. Do the rental grade work and hold that thing for the long haul. Raise the rents every single year. Oh my gosh, you can see me in workout. This is ridiculous. I'm going to fill up a dumpster, so don't think I'm wearing this to by any means make you think that I'm actually going to the gym. I am not. Number nine, watch my video on LLCs and the kind of insurance you want for your rental properties and have a little bit of background around this. Click the button. You need to know this information. My opinion, obviously consult with an attorney and a CPA and all that other stuff that I'm supposed to say because I'm not any of those things. I'm just a real estate broker. I wasn't kidding. Sometimes you gotta get dirty to get a house ready to go on the market. And I'd rather not delay anything. I'd rather just make it happen. And this is my dad who's helping me out. See, you gotta get the family involved. Anyway. Number 10, don't care about mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is a joke, guys. The bank is letting you get into a house for three to 5% down. Look at the video where you can control $1.2 million, a four unit apartment deal for $42,000 down. That's nuts. So what, you gotta pay a few hundred bucks in mortgage insurance. Your goal is after two to five years, you can refinance to get rid of it or even better than refinancing to get rid of it. If it's a conventional loan that you used, you can usually get rid of it once you reach 20% equity and you've had the loan for at least two years. That's why you buy in the wedge, you get to that 20% way faster and you get rid of that mortgage insurance. It ain't a big deal and then your payment goes down, even more of a deal. So if you get a cash flowing deal day one, your cash flow goes through the roof when you pay off that mortgage insurance and you start raising the rents every year. All right y'all, buckle up. Number 11, and don't worry, I got this in autopilot. We talked earlier about why you wanna upgrade things rental grade and not so fancy, cause you want special colors. You're gonna do everything edge comb gray on the walls, flat sheen, Swiss coffee semi-gloss on all the trim, must be semi-gloss walls in the bathrooms and laundries, but everything else flat. Don't talk to me about eggshell and all this other stuff. Make your life easy, follow a formula. If you don't have a formula, do this. If you got a formula, you can do whatever you want. But your plan is to move every single year. Now obviously you have to be able to afford to do that, so it might take you longer than a year. Maybe you're only gonna buy a place every two years. But my gosh, if you start at 20, you buy a place every two or even three years, you know how far ahead you're gonna be when you're 40, 45, 50? And you wanna go play soccer with your kids? You're just sitting pretty. Owning property, folks, internalize it, and internalize it as a lifestyle. Now I'm at the dump. Point number 12, and I think I actually already gave this one away, don't spend big on furniture. It doesn't increase your net worth. It's a money-losing asset, and I already talked about this earlier, so we'll move on to point number 13, but in the meantime, enjoy this time lapse. All right, folks, by far the most important thing for you to do, number 13. You need to keep the property you're moving out of. Don't mess this part up. You gotta keep the one you're moving out of. And look, folks, we're gonna talk about qualifying in a second here. And you might also be thinking, why the heck am I doing this? Well, folks, sometimes you just have to take certain things into your own hands. And sometimes people don't wanna do the dirty stuff, and you gotta do it for them. Anyway, we gotta get this property on the market, so that's why I'm doing this. Huh? Oh, shit, danke. The reason you're gonna keep the property before is you want your tenants 
to pay that property off for you. And again, we're going to talk about qualifying in a second here. But you want your tenants to pay these properties off, and you're going to thank me in 30 years. Hopefully, I'm still around. And if I am, you can send me a postcard. Or just hit the subscribe button now if you want to give back. And the like button. And then I get some people that say, oh, well, you know, Kevin, I mean, after 30 years, the property's gonna be crap again. Well, you guys, listen, this is what you gotta do. Every rental property, you put aside 200 bucks per unit per month. Whether you spend it or not, you put it into an account. Because yeah, one day you're gonna have to replace a roof for 10 grand, but you don't have to do that that often. 200 bucks adds up. And don't tell me there are a lot of expensive systems in the house. It's honestly 200 bucks a month. It's, that's pretty good, especially since remember, you want to buy those properties and renovate them at the beginning. So if you've already upgraded the electrical, the plumbing, and the heating, and, and the ductwork, and those big things, that should all be part of your first initial renovation. That's part of the buying in the wedge. Oh, but after 30 years, you might have to replace the Romex. No. What about the pecs? No. And even if you do, stop being jaded. Don't be a baby. All right, y'all ready for this? I'm going to floor it. Not really getting anywhere. Number 14, you're going to use the rental income from your previous properties to help you qualify for your next ones. When you go from your first property to your second property, you get to use 75% of the projected rent on your first property that you're gonna rent out right when you close escrow towards your income. That's awesome. In the future, and this is why it's very important to run your taxes very cleanly and have very little expenses on your properties. In the future, you'll actually get to use your Schedule E tax returns, which you don't have to know what that means. If you do happen to know what that means, both of y'all just take away the same bottom line. It just means you oftentimes get to qualify even more income, sometimes around 80 to 85% of the actual rents that you're getting, which is awesome. So the bottom line of, of this whole point number 14, you're going to use the rent from your previous rental properties to help you qualify. This is also why it's still important though to have a good job. Because again, you're only qualifying 75% of that rent, so you still have to qualify for the other 25% and the new place that you're buying. That's why I always say start small, start building that cash flow, build that rental return, build that rental history, and, and get that positive cash flow flowing in so that when the lenders take 75% off on your rental properties, you still don't have to qualify for any extra because you run them at a positive cash flow. Then you can qualify for essentially an infinite number of properties. Another reason though I say don't quit your job. Ugh, use the job to help you qualify. Number 15, be very careful of refinancing too much. Every single time you refinance, you reset the amortization schedule and there's no such thing as a free refinance. You pay no matter what. But there are times where it makes sense, where it could appear like you're getting a free refinance, and that's usually when rates are about three quarters to 1% less than what you locked. So if you got a 5.5% rate, and you could get a rate at 45 or 4%, and you're not too deep into your amortization schedule, a refinance could make sense. It could also make sense because you might want to take cash out of the property. Obviously, there's the BRRR method where you take cash out out of a property so you can finance your next deal, but I don't like that so much because if you're constantly refinancing, you're never really paying these things down or building equity and building that cash flow. You keep doing cash out refinances, your cash flow goes to bye bye. That's why I prefer to go in one time with a low down payment loan and letting the equity and the cash flow build naturally over time. My makeup's all messed up. I don't wear makeup. <laughs> I bet I got some of you though. <laughs> Number 16, if you need help qualifying, Get a cosigner when you're doing an FHA loan. You can get a cosigner that doesn't have to live in the property and they can help you qualify for your first real estate deal. Remember, I'm all about getting started. I want to see you guys start and girls. Number 17, the loan you really want to consider when you get started is not just the FHA loan, which is three and a half percent down. Remember, the two main kinds of loans you want are FHA or conventional. That's it. There are other cool loan programs out there, but if you're clueless about loans, just ask about those two programs, and then you can always ask for other programs from your lender. Remember, you want to consult a really good lender that knows about investments and knows how to format deals and get you the deal. But consider this. You could take advantage of what's called an FHA 203k loan, where you buy a wedge property and you finance the repairs. So you could buy something and finance, say, $50,000 in repairs. Amazing program. Just don't make the mistake of trying to do it all yourself in terms of the repairs. 
That turns into a nightmare real fast. Number 18, know that with an FHA loan, you can really only use that once. There are circumstances like a job relocation where you could use FHA again, but that's okay. You could switch from FHA to a three or 5% down conventional loan after your first purchase. FHA has a little bit lower rates, but the fees are higher. So usually people stray away from FHA after their first loan anyway. Number 19, stop worrying about passive income when you're 19. Starting out like this, starting out with no money, your goal should not be passive income from day one. You cannot expect and you shouldn't really desire passive income at 15, 20, 25, 30. Look, beyond that, yeah, maybe you've got some more money built up and you wanna start buying deals that are gonna give you a lot of passive income right away. But if you're going in with low down payments, know that over time, over the long run, and this is obviously based on history, so th crazy things can happen and it might all be wrong. But based on history, not only are values going to appreciate, but rents are going to appreciate. That means your rents are going to go up. And that's why I always encourage every single year, raise your units, $25 a unit. It's 300 bucks extra per unit per year. You have 10 units, that's three grand extra in passive income. Folks, you can get there. You can make this happen. But don't beat yourself up to try to retire off one property this next year. Final point never sell. That's it. It's that simple. If you're going to sell, you're going to have to watch a different video. You know, at some point it's going to make sense to trade up and sell all your portfolio and spend money on say Cardone Capital, or maybe you just want a big apartment complex and kind of consolidate everything. But worry about that when you have 20 doors. Get to 20 doors first. Take advantage of these tips to get to 20 doors. And of course, after you've fully depreciated a property, usually after 27 and a half years, if it's residential, one to four, you're going to want to sell because you want your depreciation benefits. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. Just hit the subscribe button and I'll teach you.